In this video, we will be dividing square roots and then rationalizing the denominator when necessary. So when dividing square roots, most students have a pretty good gut instinct about what to do. Um, and here you'll see we have the square root of 12 over 49. And if your gut is telling you that you should square root the numerator and then square root the denominator, then you have a pretty good gut when it comes to square root properties because if we have a fraction or if we have a division problem inside of a square root, we can rewrite it as the division of the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. So here I've written this now as two separate square roots and what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on them one at a time. So I'm going to start by simplifying the square root of 12. So here we have the square root of 12, and I know that 12 is divisible by a perfect square of 4. So I can rewrite this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, which then the square root of 4 is really 2. And then we have the square root of 3. So if I simplify my numerator, it becomes 2 square root of 3. And then from here, if I look at my denominator, well, my denominator is the square root of 49, and 49 is actually a perfect square. So the square root of 49 is 7. So my final answer here, fully simplified, is 2 times the square root of 3 divided by 7. So let's do a couple more examples here. Again, I notice that I have a fraction underneath a full square root, so I can split it up into the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. And then from here I simplify them one at a time. So I here focus first on the square root of 4. I know that 4 is a perfect square, so the square root of 4 is 2. And then I focus here on my denominator, the square root of 81 is also a perfect square, and the square root of 81 is 9. So my final answer here really is as simple as 2 divided by 9. Then if I look at my second example here, again I'm going to break this up into the square root of the numerator divided by the square root of the denominator. So now if I focus on the numerator first, I know that 24 is divisible by a perfect square of 4. So I'm going to split that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 6, and then I'm going to have the square root of x squared. Then if I keep simplifying here, well the square root of 4 I know is 2, so I have a 2. The square root of x squared is x, so I have 2x. So I have 2x now outside of the square root, and I have the square root of 6 underneath. So now that I've simplified my numerator, let's simplify our denominator here. So the square root of 100 is a perfect square of 10. So then we can add this here to be 10. And then finally our last thing is that hopefully as good mathematicians you're already noticing that the numbers in my numerator and denominator that are outside of the root we have 2 over 10. And that 2 over 10 can actually simplify further to be 1 over 5. So we can simplify that fraction using our knowledge of simplifying fractions to be 1x times the square root of 6 all divided by 5. So now let's take a look at the following example. So here if we follow that same thought process, we're going to square root our numerator and square root our denominator. And when we do this, what we notice is that the square root of our numerator simply becomes 10. But the square root of our denominator is fully simplified and we're left with the square root of 5. However, in mathematics, it is bad practice to leave a square root in our denominator. So what we're going to focus on next is what we do when we have a radical in our denominator. And you should be making a note in your notes that we are not allowed to leave a square root or a radical in our denominator. So what we're going to talk through next are some strategies we can use 
to help us rewrite this so that we no longer have a square root symbol in our denominator. So this strategy of rewriting a fraction because there's a square root in the denominator is called rationalizing the denominator. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use this strategy called rationalizing the denominator in order to help us rewrite a square root problem so there are no square roots in the denominator. Numerator is okay, denominator not so much. So here notice step one when we're simplifying these fractions with these square roots is to simplify the numerator square root and simplify the denominator square root. So that's where we started and this is where we ended on the last slide. Now, the cool little trick we can use to help us rationalize the denominator is we can multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by the radical that is the problem in our denominator. So here I notice that the square root of 5 is my problem. That's the issue. That's why I can't leave my current fraction the way that it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both the numerator by the square root of 5 and the denominator by the square root of 5. Now while this might seem a little weird, what I want you to notice is that the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 5 is really 1. So what I'm doing here is I'm just strategically multiplying this fraction by 1 in a kind of weird way in order to help me so I can rewrite it without a square root in the denominator. Because if we now follow this through, what we notice is our numerator becomes 10 square roots of 5 but our denominator becomes the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, which, if we keep going, can be simplified to be the square root of 5 times 5 is 25, which then the square root of 25 becomes just 5. So notice here that by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by our problem, we were able to rewrite this fraction to be 10 times the square root of 5, all divided by 5. And notice that there's no longer a square root here in the denominator. Now our final step here is because we notice that we have the fraction of 10 over 5 outside of that square root, we can actually simplify this further to be 2 square roots of 5 over 1. So last two examples here. So let's start by just simplifying the square root by square rooting both the numerator and the denominator separately. So here we get the square root of 4 over the square root of 7. The square root of 4 is 2 over the square root of 7 is fully simplified. So what I notice here is that I have a problem. The square root of 7 is in my denominator and I'm not allowed to keep a square root in my denominator. So what I'm going to do is since the problem is the square root of 7, I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom of that fraction by the square root of 7. And remember, this is a strategic way of multiplying by 1. So here, if I multiply the numerator by the square root of 7, I get 2 square roots of 7. If I multiply my denominator by the square root of 7, I get square root of 7 times the square root of 7, which ultimately becomes the square root of 7 times 7 is 49, and then the square root of 49 is a perfect square, so I end up with just 7 in my denominator. And then from here, because I have a fraction where there is no square root in the denominator, I now know that that is fully simplified. Now if I look at my next example here, I start off by square rooting the numerator and square rooting the denominator. What I notice is my numerator is actually fully simplified, but my denominator has a number that is divisible by a perfect square. So 24 is divisible by 4, so I'm going to break that up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 6 times the square root of y. Now my numerator is simplified, but my denominator becomes, here we have, square root of 4 is 2, so I have 2 times the square root of 6y. So now I've fully simplified both the numerator and the denominator, and what I'm looking for next is how I can fix this square root in my denominator down here. And remember, if we have a square root in our denominator, that is the problem, that's the issue, and we're actually going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the issue. So here we have the square root of 6y over the square root of 
6y. So I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 6y. So now if I do this, my numerator becomes the square root of 5 times the square root of 6y. And my denominator becomes 2 times the square root of 6y times the square root of 6y. So now I'm going to slowly use what I know to be true about these square roots. And I'm going to take my space down below and keep simplifying. So here, I notice that I have two numbers contained underneath square roots, so I'm going to multiply them together to be the square root of 30y. And then down below I have my coefficient of 2 times the square root of 6 times 6 is 36. y times y is y squared. So my numerator stays the square root of 30y. My denominator, if I split this up, becomes 2 times the square root of 36 times the square root of y squared. So then my denominator becomes 2 times the square root of 36 is 6 times the square root of y squared is y. So I end up with the square root of 30y all divided by 2 times 6, which is 12y.